Hello and welcome back to my channel. It's so great to have you here hanging out with me again. In this video, I'm gonna dive deeper into Gemini and compatibility. This way you can get even more detailed when it comes to having the tools to make the most of either finding the relationship you desire or if you're already in a relationship, deepening the love, maximizing the enjoyment of that relationship and strengthening the connection. And in this video, we'll be talking about Gemini. So keep in mind as you're watching this that it will apply to sun sign and moon sign compatibility, meaning you can apply it to Gemini sun sign with each sun sign in that compatibility and Gemini moon with each sign in the moon position. For example, if I'm talking about Gemini and Taurus compatibility, it will apply to Gemini sun and compatibility with someone that has Taurus sun sign. Then it will also apply to someone that has Gemini moon dating someone that has Taurus moon but not so much Gemini sun sign dating someone that has a Taurus moon because that breakdown is a little more complicated. For now, we are sticking to sun sign with sun sign and moon sign with moon sign compatibility. So no more wasting time. Here are the goods on Gemini when it comes to compatibility with each sign of the zodiac. Let's go. Okay, so for those of you who watched my do's and don'ts videos, you know when it came to soulmate compatibility, I broke it down into three categories. So let's start with category one. And in this category, it would be the best matches for Gemini. And those signs would be Aries, Aquarius, Libra, and Leo. Okay, so Aries and Gemini. Well, although Gemini may not want to admit this, <laughs> Aries will end up being the decision maker, but this will actually work out great because Gemini is fantastic at coming up with ideas and creative visions regarding almost any topic, and Aries is great at focusing that energy into a final decision and moving forward and taking action. So in this way, they complement each other very well. They also both love socializing, constant adventure, and each other's sense of humor. The only issue that more than likely will come up in this relationship is a bit of bickering because Aries, like all cardinal signs, tend to take a parenting role at times, and Gemini is definitely not into being parented by their romantic partner. However, these bickering sessions are short-lived and they move right back to having fun and being great friends as well as even better lovers. Now, Aquarius and Gemini. Well, these two make a great match. They both have no problem forgiving each other when their unpredictable nature gets them in trouble because they obviously have no problem understanding being unpredictable since they both can be that way. <laughs> Not to mention that they both stay way too active to be pulled down by any jealousy issues. Of course, this can change if they have a lot of water in their chart, but without that factor, they both can shake off jealousy pretty quickly. They also make sure to have a strong friendship in addition to the romantic dynamic, so this really helps them to stay connected. As long as these two can be clear on what the dynamic of commitment is between the two of them, then they can have major power couple potential. Okay, Libra and Gemini. You know whenever we have two energies from the same element, this is going to be a natural, easy connection between the two of them. Neither of them is too demanding, they both love keeping things light, and they agree on almost everything, and even when they don't agree, it's no big deal because they appreciate diversity of thought. Libra loves the way Gemini is excited by each of life's encounters, and Gemini loves Libra's good taste and appreciation for the finer things in life. As long as they can implement some financial practicality into the relationship, and as long as they can make sure to discuss what they see in terms of their plans for the future, then these two should be good to go. They get a definite thumbs up from me. All right, now Leo and Gemini. Now these two definitely have more in common than they do differences. Leo's confidence invites Gemini's seductive nature, and Gemini actually has a lot of fun trying to one-up Leo in a healthy competitive way though, meaning they are both ambitious and they have fun with each other by seeing who can be the bigger, more successful personality, while they're still supporting each other and wanting for both of them to win and to work as a team. A lot of good fun and a lot of good sex is a large portion of why these work so well together. Gemini does have a tendency to analyze and sometimes criticize though, so as long as Leo doesn't take the criticism personally, and as long as Gemini understands Leo's need for consistency when it comes to affection, then these two have the potential to be in it for the long term. Okay, in the second category, we have the signs that can work for Gemini, but it will definitely be tricky and it will take a little extra work. The signs in this category would be Cancer, Capricorn, Taurus, Pisces, and being with another Gemini. Okay, Cancer and Gemini. 
Now initially, Gemini's lively energy puts Cancer in a great mood, and Cancer's affectionate nature fulfills Gemini's desire for physical connection. They will find a bond when it comes to creativity, and they both love to laugh, and this also adds to their connection. The challenge with these two is Cancer definitely doesn't love Gemini's flirtatious nature. Mainly because Gemini says that they aren't being flirtatious. They say that Cancer is seeing it all the wrong way, and that they're just being friendly. And Gemini feels tied down by Cancer's rules and regulations, which Cancer sees not as rules and regulations, but more as necessary protection and boundaries for the relationship. So if they can get on the same page in these two areas, they can be great together. If not, the differences in these two areas will cause some major conflict. Okay, Capricorn and Gemini. Now these two are very different personalities that can for sure over time develop a major appreciation for one another. Gemini can influence Capricorn to be a little more open-minded and a little more lighthearted, and Capricorn can influence Gemini to be a little more focused and to be more consistent in terms of making their dreams a reality. So if Gemini can jump on board to some of Capricorn's rules and Capricorn can loosen up in the judgmental area, these two actually have some real potential here. But without the necessary compromise, it will be a continuous struggle. Gemini will struggle for more freedom and Capricorn will struggle for more reliability and consistency in their partner. And without other parts of their chart that help these adjustments, they may find that they are much better off as friends. Alright, now Taurus and Gemini. Well, Taurus loves the fact that Gemini is so excited by life, and Gemini loves the fact that Taurus is direct with their communication. So this creates a strong physical attraction between the two of them. But once we get past the physical attraction, the challenges begin. Gemini will be bored with Taurus's constant need for stability and their constant desire to have conversations and ask questions regarding the relationship's future plans. And Taurus will for sure get frustrated with how much Gemini loves to have fun expressing their freedom as an individual outside of the relationship. In order for this to work, these two will have to have a serious sit-down conversation about what they truly and specifically require in a relationship in order to be fulfilled, and then make commitments on both sides to take the necessary and specific actions to fulfill those needs. Without this level of clarity when it comes to communication, they may find that their differences are just too plentiful to overcome. Okay, Pisces and Gemini. This is a situation where their passion for each other will be very strong. Pisces is an open, imaginative lover, and Gemini has that fun, lively, wild side that makes Pisces feel free to express themselves, which is great. The problems start to occur when Gemini finds that Pisces takes love very, very seriously, which means they can get their feelings hurt by Gemini's mischievous behavior, and issues will also come up when Gemini expresses their need for freedom because Pisces is all about freedom in terms of no rules, but they do do want to have experiences as a couple and when Gemini says freedom for them that translates to having some alone time which really doesn't compute for Pisces and Gemini will then get irritated by Pisces insecurities and Pisces will see Gemini as insensitive so unless they bridge this gap with other parts of their chart that diminish these disconnecting traits then these two will for sure have a challenging ride together okay now a Gemini dating another Gemini now in the bedroom these two will have the time of their lives but once the lights turn on and they have to exist in the real world, we're going to have some problems. Two people with tons of ideas and exciting agendas sounds great in theory, and these two will have a lot of fun together, but they're going to need other parts of their chart that bring a bit more practicality and consistency to the relationship if it's going to work. This is another one of these situations where they will have to get clear on agreements regarding the goals and dynamics of the relationship. If they don't, they may just wind up as two people that started off having great sex together and then transitioned into two friends that have a lot of laughs, a lot of good times, but some somehow ended up in new relationships with different people for no reason other than the novelty of the sexual connection wore off and there was nothing else on the romantic side to grasp onto. They will have no bad blood between the two of them, they just won't have enough of a romantic emotional connection or a commitment to sustain the relationship. Okay, the third and final category would be the most challenging matches for Gemini and those signs would be Virgo, Scorpio, and Sagittarius. Okay, Virgo and Gemini. Well, both of these signs are ruled by Mercury, so they approach situations from an intellectual perspective, which works really well in terms of compatibility, because at least in a situation when problems arise, they will be more logical than emotional. However, the main issue between the two of their personalities is that they really see the world and love so differently. Virgo will see Gemini as all over the place and impractical, and Gemini will see Virgo as uptight. <laughs> now, this can actually be resolved if they have other placements that bring them together. 
For example, I have clients that are married and one is Gemini with Scorpio Moon and she's married to a Virgo with Capricorn Moon. Now Capricorn Moon and Scorpio Moon are perfect together. So emotionally they have a very, very strong bond and this can counterbalance the fact that their personalities are so different. But without a major point of connection like this example, Virgo energy and Gemini energy will find it very hard to bridge the gap of consistent disconnect brought on by the fact that they see the world so very differently. Now Scorpio and Gemini. Well for one thing, Scorpios are very private and this is a problem because Geminis love to talk. <laughs> they love to tell stories and they love to share their world with other people. If sex were all that mattered in the relationship, these two would be a great match for each other. However, we all know that yes, sex is a very, very important part of a relationship, but you have to be able to get along outside of the bedroom. And outside of the bedroom, in almost every area of life, these two see things differently. When conflict arises, and it most definitely will, they will have a hard time resolving the issue because Scorpio is not very forgiving unless you take total responsibility for your part in the disconnect. And Gemini is all about talking their way out of things and attempting to make you see the situation the way that they see it. And Scorpio does not fall for that manipulation tactic. So without some serious help from other parts of their chart, these two will be in a constant struggle to find a reason to stay together other than the good sex. Now last but not least, Sagittarius and Gemini. The one thing that these two have in common is they both have tons of ideas and they're both really creative problem solvers. So when they meet and there is an attraction, they will for sure have fantasies of what the possibilities can bring when it comes to the love that they could share between the two of them. But this quickly, and I mean quickly, becomes a big disagreement. Now if one person is a Sagittarius with Gemini Moon, or if one person is a Gemini with Sagittarius Moon, then they do have hope. However, any other version of this combination is going to be engaged in a constant uphill battle to find some way to resolve the many, many issues that come about by being in a relationship with someone that sees just about everything in the exact opposite way. Now I know I said both of them are great problem solvers, so you would think that if they have problems in the relationship that it wouldn't be difficult for them to solve whatever issue it is. However, because they see things exactly in the opposite way, they may both have great ideas on how to resolve it, but neither one of them wants to give in to the others because they don't see it as the best idea. And this is one of the types of issues that you get when you try to have two polar opposites, two people who see the world in two completely different ways attempting to have a romantic relationship together. So without them having some major other points of compatibility in their chart, it's going to be a difficult, difficult uphill battle. So there you have it, a bit more detail when it comes to compatibility with a Gemini. Now remember, I'm a firm believer that you can be with anyone if you're in love and both of you are committed to growing together, having great communication, and always doing your part to stay connected. You know what I always say, love. That's all and that's enough. So I'm sending you all tons of love. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. If you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. Thank you so much for taking the time to come and hang out with me and I will see you in the next video.